the sexy for you all on this Saturday afternoon. Um, I think we can do that, though, because we need good data to make good policy. And for folks who are thinking about running for office, folks who are thinking about supporting people to run for office, then you need to dig into voter files because there's so much more that we can learn than we're currently employing. And if we can sort of learn from the data, then we can see so many more opportunities moving forward to increase the political representation and voice of AAPIs. Okay, so here is just some background information about AAPIs in San Diego County. So these data are literally at our fingertips. So if we want information about AAPIs in general, if we want to disaggregate that to the AAs or the PIs, if we want to focus on certain national origin groups, then literally the data are at our fingertips. But again, we're not, in my sort of a opinion, we're not utilizing the data as well as we uh, can. So here, just by way of background, there are over 500,000 AAPIs in San Diego County. So when we think about AAPIs, we know that we are a very, very diverse group. And again, we can disaggregate however you want to serve your particular community. In terms of census microdata from which these numbers come from, if you're working on census and you need the number of LEP individuals by language, we can do that in a matter of seconds. If you're working on health coverage, we can get the number of AAPIs with and without health insurance by uh, public use microdata areas in San Diego County. All of these things, again, are literally at our fingertips. So here, we're just looking at AAPIs relative to the San Diego County population as a whole. We're talking about 15.6%, one of the largest AAPI uh, populations in the country. When we think about our particular AAPI population, we're also talking about one that is majority foreign born. So that immigrant experience is very real and vivid for AAPIs in San Diego County. In terms of the countries of origin, the top country of origin is the Philippines, 38.6%, followed by China, so China that includes Hong Kong and Taiwan, and then Vietnam. So these numbers may not surprise many of you in terms of the rank order, Filipinos, Chinese, and then Vietnamese. But again, we can sort of dig deeper, and so let's dig just, just a little bit deeper. So when we think about SD County as a whole, we're 3.3 million strong and growing, again, over 500,000 AAPIs. Here are those foreign-born individuals from the Philippines, China, and Vietnam. So when we look at AAPIs in general, 8.9% live at 100% or below the poverty line. 36.2% have a bachelor's degree or higher. 21.1% are LEP, so limited English proficient. This means that they either do not speak English, or if they are bilingual, they don't speak English very well. And here, 32.9% are naturalized. Now, one can sort of begin imagining the different issues that we may want to champion and wonder, well, for AAPIs in San Diego County, how prevalent is this particular issue? And if the scale is large enough, then what types of coalitions do we need to bring together to address these issues? Well, in terms of the LEP population, we just heard something about Census 2020. I'm on the Census uh, Complete Count Committee for the state of California. A large sort of part of the outreach effort is going to be about figuring out how to send the right messengers, culturally competent, language competent, messengers to individuals to encourage them to take the census. Now, for this LEP population, if we said 21.1% of San Diego County is limited English proficient, one may not actually think that the scale or the magnitude of the issue is that large. If we take AAPIs in general and compare it to other parts of uh, California, then we, as the Census Complete Count Committee, may be thinking, well, there are other counties that may need more resources to outreach to limited English proficient populations. But here, when we look at uh, foreign-born individuals from the Philippines, it jumps up to 29.9 percent. Excuse me. If we look at those from China, 45.5 percent limited English proficient. And then when we look at Vietnam, 61.3 percent limited English proficient. So. I believe deeply that data is power.
Data is a way to be persuasive. Data is a way to make a convincing argument in order to move policy in the direction that you want to see it move in. But again, the thesis for today is that we're underutilizing data on AAPIs in San Diego County. Okay, so if you wanted to dig deeper, again, it's not just about characteristics with and without health insurance, unemployed, employed, on public benefits, not on public benefits. If we want to dig deeper and think, okay, well, we have AAs on one hand, we have PIs on the other hand, if you think those categories are still too large, then here's a glimpse at the diversity of the AAPI population in San Diego County. Now, the census microdata has ancestry. So when we think about racial and ethnic categories, they're kind of fuzzy. But if you ask a white person, well, what's your ancestry? They might say Irish, for example. And then, oh, okay, your ethnicity is Irish. The census does the same for AAPIs. And it's self-reported. So for somebody who might be half Filipino, half white, they might say their first ancestry is white, depending on how they sort of feel that given morning. But here, this is the first ancestry for AAPIs in San Diego. So Filipino, that is the plurality followed by not reported. When we think about Census 2020, we want to have an accurate and a complete count because we have roughly $200,000 per person per year to the state of California in federal funding as part of the census. And so if we aren't reporting our ethnicity as AAPIs, then we actually are losing not just potential political power, but also resources followed by Chinese, Vietnamese, Asian, Indian, Korean, Japanese. Some people just say Asian. Okay, well, that's you know, more power to you. But look here, in San Diego County, we have Mexican as the first ancestry reported for AAPIs. Again, when we think about the diversity of our population, we can sort of imagine a lot of individuals, multi-race individuals. We have a lot of multi-race electeds who are AAPI plus more. And so we see Mexicans show up, uh, white, Caucasian, and then Laotian, Cambodian, Hawaiian, Thai, other. I just didn't have enough room in this particular graph to show literally the hundreds of ancestries that AAPIs in San Diego County self-report. But here, this is intended to whet your appetite. If you've wondered about AAPIs in San Diego County, and if you've wondered what we can actually know about AAPIs in San Diego County, that in terms of characteristics, in terms of disaggregating the data, there is so much that we can potentially do. But because we're talking about civic engagement, because we are talking about electoral power, because we are talking about potentially winning and losing elections, then I spent some time digging into electoral data. And so for anybody who's worked on campaigns, you're going to see some hopefully interesting insights about AAPIs in a second. But here first, we have a 300,000 person strong CVAP population. So that's the citizen voting age population. So if you're working on voter registration, then this is a potential goal. 100% voter registration among eligible AAPIs. Will we get it? Probably not. But if we get close, then that's progress. So the CVAP population for AAPIs in San Diego County is almost 10% larger than the county-wide average. Okay, so we have more individuals who are 18 or older and are citizens, thus eligible to register to vote and then subsequently vote. But we have this sort of persistent issue that has already been raised in that we have lack of representation and that is partly a function of we're not flexing our electoral muscle. Okay, what does our electoral muscle look like? Uh, what does our electoral muscle look like? I wish it looked like this. So this is a dot. The darker the map, the more voters there are. So this is 1.6 million voters in San Diego County. Okay, the left is roughly the area south of the eight, and then the right are AAPI voters. So AAPI voters in the right, this is all voters roughly south of the eight on the left. I don't think that you're going to be able to squint your eyes and actually see anything on these maps other than 
the distribution of AAPI voters in San Diego County actually is more dispersed than we typically tend to think about. One city council district for the city of San Diego being larger than average AAPI. Well, our numbers suggest that we should get more. And we should be demanding more because, again, our numbers are large and growing and they are dispersed. But let's dig in a little bit deeper. Okay, so when we're thinking about voter file data, and if you're trying to micro-target voters in a voter file, you're trying to think, okay, what is it about this particular voter that gives me some sort of comparative advantage over other competitors? In other words, is this voter going to actually be somebody who I can bring into my tent, and if so, why? So we think about race and ethnicity as one particular characteristic that we use to target voters. Now, it's really hard to identify AAPI voters when the raw data from the San Diego County Registrar of Voters doesn't give us race and ethnicity. We get birthplace, but we don't get race and ethnicity. And so a lot of data vendors have to estimate whether or not somebody is likely Chinese, whether or not somebody is likely Filipino, whether or not somebody is likely Korean, et cetera. And so those methods of estimation, they're inherently fuzzy, but they do okay for the most part. So when we think about San Diego County's 1.667 million voters countywide, here's the breakdown, 35.9% Democrat, 27.6% Republican, 30.9% NPP, so no party preference. Now, when we think about trying to figure out AAPI voters in the file, we're saying, okay, well, my last name is Wong. That gives me an increased predicted probability of being Chinese relative to other AAPI ethnicities. So there are an estimated 30,518 Chinese voters in San Diego County. So this number comes from L2, which is a data vendor. So if you work with PDI or VAN or Catalyst, Target Smart, L2 is my preferred because they're incredibly rigorous when it comes to analytics. Okay, but here when we look at Chinese, 29.2% Democrat, 18.8% Republican, and then almost the majority are like, I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, 48.5% being NPP. Now, when we think about trying to translate data into insights, and insights specifically designed to increase political power and representation, then this 48.5% of Chinese voters being no party preference should mean what? It should mean those who want to get elected need to figure out what the interests and the preferences are of Chinese voters in order to win them over. And when we think about Vietnamese, 39.7% NPP relative to the 30% countywide average. Filipinos, 38.1% NPP. Asian Indians, for any Asian Indians in the room, it's NPP, but it's also Democrats. So there's really no hope for Republicans uh, among Asian Indians. Okay, so that's a sense of party, but there are other sort of characteristics that we should be paying attention to. And so here, these are the number of low propensity voters for our upcoming presidential election in San Diego County. So these are voters who likely will not receive a mailer, likely will not receive a door knock, likely will not receive a phone call from a campaign. Because if you've worked on a campaign or if you've ever managed a campaign, you target likely voters first in this traditional playbook, and you only focus on low propensity voters to the extent that there are resources to do so. In other contexts, we have sort of turned that traditional campaign playbook on its head effectively to win campaigns. Don't have enough time to talk about that here today, but when it comes to low propensity voters, 37.6% of registered voters in San Diego County likely will not vote in the 2020 presidential election. When it comes to AAPI voters in San Diego County, that is almost half. So when we think again about political power, well, it starts with voting. And so this particular group might be one to focus on. I'm running out of time, but I just want to whet your appetite further. So when you think about how to increase AAPI political power through civic engagement, well, how do we actually talk to AAPI voters? How do we outreach to them? We have a sense of who they are. We have a sense of their numbers. But here, 
newly registered voters account for 10% of the San Diego County uh, voter file. So these are voters who registered after the presidential election in 2016. Now, when we see East and South Asians, it's 14.5%. Asian Indians, all the way up to 17%. These are new voters that we want to engage. They have expressed something about their want and desire to be engaged in politics. And so if we're not the ones outreaching to our communities, a whole lot of campaigns with, no offense to anybody here, with old white people as political consultants saying, just target likely voters who are disproportionately wealthy, disproportionately white. Well, if we just let politics play out, then our communities won't be engaged. Okay, digital media targeting. When it comes to digital media targeting, don't let anybody ever tell you that you cannot outreach to AAPI voters through social media. Just to show you some numbers here, 22.9% is the verified matches when it comes to social media. So what this means is that we can target individuals on Facebook or other social media platforms. Yes, there is variation, but if you want Filipinos on social media, you can definitely do that. And then lastly, when it comes to political donors, so if you're thinking about, okay, well, now I'm ready to run. I have a sense of what the numbers are. I have a sense of how I can potentially target individuals. Then you're going to need money. You're going to need that support. And so when it comes to political donors, I wouldn't look at these numbers as, oh, our community don't give. I would say, hey, why don't you think about this for a second? Maybe we see numbers like this because our communities aren't asked. So here, these are donors for federal elections. So in San Diego County, only 1.5% of all registered voters have donated to a federal election. So giving money to a politician, that's a rare event. But for East and South Asians, that's even lower. For Chinese, hovering around 1%. For Vietnamese and Filipinos, a fraction of a percent. So again, my, I would sort of flip this on its head to say, it's not that our communities won't give, Maybe it's because they haven't been asked. And now there is so much more to get into, but my time is up, so hopefully I whet your appetite a little bit in terms of data. Thank you.